Hey there, rednecks, preppies, redneck preppies. It's me, the redneck preppy. How you doing today? Great? Good. When people start their journey down the reloading path, they're typically focusing on the obvious, the recommended range of acceptable and safe powder loads and perhaps velocity. But not getting as much attention are chamber pressures. Now that's understandable since most reloaders have no way of measuring chamber pressure. Overpressure refers to the condition where the pressure inside of a cartridge that's going off exceeds the safe limits specified for the firearm or ammunition. Now, often with reloading data, you will see predicted or measured chamber pressures. Now, you can match that against SAMI or CIP maximum pressures for that cartridge and what your rifle or handgun is designed to handle. Now, for the most part, if you stick to published load data, you don't need to worry about it. Mistakes, however, in data collection and publishing do happen. Or perhaps you're one of those that likes to cook up your own powder loads. Or something else unexpected is happening. Knowing how to detect the signs of overpressure is a valuable skill for new or experienced reloaders. Now, we're going to take a look at some of the signs of overpressure so that you know if you need to perhaps change what you're doing. Now, we'll start off with primers. <clears throat> I believe that the state of primers after firing are a good indicator of potential overpressure, and there are a number of signs which can illustrate that. The first is a primer that's been pushed back out of the primer pocket to some extent or completely blown out. Now, it's possible that that was caused by very loose primer pockets which you probably would have noticed during the priming stage. And obviously that brass should be tossed immediately. If priming the cases felt normal, however, then you probably have an excellent indication of overpressure with that load. Now, next is the pierced primer. Now, I experienced this one myself a few months back with a load that the data said was within safe parameters, but admittedly near the upper end and pretty hot hot enough that a good number of the primers were pierced when I checked them out afterwards. And yes, I did subsequently move back from that load. Now, another common indicator of overpressure is when the primer is flattened in the primer pocket. Now, if you look closely at this example, you will see the normally rounded shoulder at the edge of a primer is now a lovely 90 degree angle. Finally, we have what's referred to as cratering. As the name implies, this refers to a depression or crater around the area where the firing pin struck the primer. And again, that indicates excessive pressures. The bottom of the cartridge case can also show you indications of overpressure. And a common one is prominent extractor marks on the rim. In extreme overpressure situations, you may see the formerly crisp writing on the rim be greatly flattened or even disappear. Needless to say, you're in a bit of a dangerous spot here. And also, if you experience a bent rim while firing, I would very seriously stop shooting that ammunition. On the subject of extraction, as you are aware, when the powder is ignited by the primer, it creates gases which, among other things, expands the brass case outwards. Now, this seals the chamber and prevents almost all of the gases from doing anything but pushing the bullet forward. In an overpressure situation, the same essentially occurs but it can lead to overexpansion. As a result, you may experience difficult extraction. Now, in a bolt action rifle, you'll notice that pretty easily when you work your action and then all of a sudden it becomes very difficult to get that case out of the chamber. In a semi-automatic rifle, you might see a change in the usual ejection pattern of the rifle, perhaps a failure to extract, or even in extreme situations, the case failing to extract with only the rim being ejected. Now, the feeling of a sticky bolt while actioning your rifle, bolt action, uh, is probably one that's related to difficult extraction and is probably the same thing or at least in the same family but if you have an otherwise normally functioning rifle with a smooth action 
Put your hands down, Mosin Nagant owners. We know all of your rifles have a sticky action. Uh, and while shooting your hand loads, you notice that the action does in fact feel sticky. It could be a sign of overpressure. Recoil can also tell you if you have an overpressure situation, obviously. Assuming that it isn't your first time firing that particular firearm, you probably know what its recoil feels like. At a minimum, you might have a baseline because you fired factory ammunition through it. Now, if you're experiencing a significant increase in recoil while shooting your hand-loaded rounds, could be a sign that you've got a hot or overpressure load. And also, if all of your hand loads have been pretty much featuring the same recoil, but you know suddenly one of them really puts it on your shoulder, you might need to double check the consistency of your pores occasionally. Loss of velocity. Now this one's gonna sound paradoxical. How could you actually see less velocity with overpressure loads? But the explanation is actually pretty simple. If you're using the latter method of development, you'll probably notice that with increasing charges, you're also seeing a gradual rise in velocity. If you see that rounds with a higher charge are actually showing diminished velocity, it could indicate that the brass is failing and actually can't contain the pressures generated after powder ignition. Now, this is also a reason why a chronograph isn't a luxury during serious load development. Now, damage to your rifle should be so obvious that I needn't even mention it, but we live in this world. Now, there are any number of reasons why your firearm may experience a failure that has nothing to do with reloaded or hand-loaded ammunition. That said, if you're firing your hand loads and you're seeing damaged locking lugs or even destroyed locking lugs, you might want to stop shooting the rifle. And needless to say, if your rifle explodes, that might be a sign of overpressure. The topic of reloading software doesn't really have that much to do with reading signs of overpressure, but I felt it kind of important to include nonetheless. A lot of reloaders like to chart paths unknown, so they develop their own loads with the aid of tools like Quick Load or Gordon's Reloading Tool. Now in the past, I've spoken very highly of these applications, make use of them myself, but I've always included caution flags. Reloading software models predicted results with whatever combination of components you come up with. Now, most of the time I've had fantastic results, but sometimes, however, I get some odd results that can't be squared with what other sources and the real world are telling me. A good and very recent example for me was the load development I was doing for 6.5 by 50 millimeter rimmed, probably more popularly known as 6.5 Japanese. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a lot of load data out there, and it's sometimes also incomplete. As you can see from this example from Hodgson's website, it doesn't have pressure information for this combination of powder and bullet. This isn't a unique example, by the way, with this cartridge. Now, I modeled this exact same load in Gordon's reloading tool, and it spit out ridiculous numbers, which included a predicted velocity of 2,850 feet per second and a chamber pressure of over 71,000 PSI, and a warning, in case I Oh, wasn't aware of it, this was a dangerous load. The reality is that I saw velocities of about 2350 feet per second, and based on similar cartridges, I figured the chamber pressure was probably in the range of 35 to 40,000 psi. Now, in this case, GRT overestimated several key numbers but there's nothing to say that another combination of powder, case, and bullet couldn't produce greatly underestimated results. 
Reloading software is an enormously helpful tool that can greatly aid your work, but don't accept its results as gospel, no matter how many times it's closely tracked with the real world in the past. It only takes one time to learn that modeling software isn't a substitute for research, cross-referencing against other information, and sensible load development. In other words, common sense. Determining overpressure by reading the primer case and the operation of your rifle is, as I think this video showed, sometimes equivocal. What may appear to be a sign of overpressure, such as a primer poached slightly out of the pocket, could also be the result of headspace issues or you incorrectly setting up your sizing dies. Regardless, it is important to remember the following. Number one, you can create an overpressure situation even when sticking with the recommended powder charges. Remember that companies that produce this data are doing so with a specified test rifle, brass, powder, and primers, all of which are usually listed along with that particular load. Changing one or more of these variables can lead to unforeseen results. Two, always start at the lower range of the recommended loads. Work your way up, always watching for overpressure signs along the way. And number three, one indicator of overpressure should get you to pause and try and figure out why you're seeing it. More than one should be an immediate halt on shooting and rethinking that load. An extreme indicator, doubly so. Reloading is a hobby that's as safe as you make it, and reading signs of overpressure is something that anyone can do. No specialized equipment is necessary. Now you know how to do it. Go forth and spread the word. At any rate, I hope you found today's video at least be vaguely entertaining and mildly informative. As always, I hope your trips to the range are safe and productive. Take care, and bye-bye.